How are you doing in the call out I did the other week for questions? One of the great questions I got from from a coach was how do you build team spirit, get players together during a short term rep program? Um, I think one of the keys to a short term rep program or even any short term program is some things you're going to have to put in the would like to do column but not essential and the key to rep coaching is focusing on the things that you need to focus on and just brushing over the things that aren't quite as important so for example in a short term rep program you're probably not going to improve players core skills that much you're probably not going to improve their lines of run that much however you can get them into a team tactical position a team strategy position and all that kind of thing and have some principles that flow through the way you're going to play the question was related to how you'd get those players to i suppose not form cliques and all that kind of thing well the way i always approach it darren who sent the question is that i think people are naturally inclined to spend time with people that they want to spend time with and people that they feel comfortable with and if you're in a tour situation or a, a camp situation or you've got literally just a few sessions to blend your team I think one of the best ways of doing that is to just say listen guys girls I know that you've got friends that you are closer to it might be that school that school that school or that club that club that club or whatever it may be but when we are working when we are together we have to throw all them away I always remember when I worked with Matthew Elliott who's now the assistant coach of the Dragons the former Canberra Penrith Bradford Warriors coach when we were away with America in 2011 he actually got the boys in a meeting room before we did any training and he said the words you are now brothers and that's not an option and he explained that you know brothers sometimes upset each other but they always come down on the side of the brother kind of thing they forgive them for things etc etc and what Matt did and I learned this from him was he just took away any reason or any inclination for anybody to hold a grudge against someone or decide not to like them and he said for the duration of this 14 days or 10 days or whatever it was you must put that to one side for the good of the group i thought that was a great approach and that's something i've used since there is obviously things you can do to blend the team together while you are training or well, one thing i always do i tell the players if i'm going to ask you somebody's name in a minute and if you don't know it you've got to do five push-ups and that kind of thing um and always always encourage them to know the person's name on their left and on their right encourage them to get into groups with people they don't know uh one tactic one trick is to get them in a meeting room and ask them uh, to ask each other a series of questions I did this on a recent aim higher camp I asked them to, the the players to ask each other name age club school and then the second person that they went to they had to ask them different questions such as who do you live with who's in your family uh, what position do you play and then somebody else had to ask some different questions and the last one was something funny I mean obviously what you do with young kids is a bit different to what you do with adults you can imagine some of the things that uh, have come out of adults mouths when I've asked these kind of questions um, Ricky Stewart once told a group of mine uh, that he came to visit he got them all to read out uh, to each other they had to pick someone and say one thing I like about you as a player and one thing I wish you'd improve and it just built respect up amongst the group he did that in an origin camp I believe so there's a few little tips there and I think ultimately the big one the absolute big one is just taking away that taboo just accept that they might be clicks accept that people might want to spend some time with people they meal they feel comfortable with and just disarm it just take away the problem just say you, you're more than welcome to spend time with people that you socially feel more comfortable with at the end of the day you want your players to be happy don't you um but yeah uh just don't 
don't allow that to creep into your training. Don't let them train with each other and no one else. Don't let them pass to each other and no one else. That's when it becomes a problem. And once you disarm it, I think you'll find it'll quickly go away. I'm going to answer another question now while I'm here because I remember I did miss a week. Uh, one young fella asked me, he wants to transition from a, a wing to a hooker. So let's assume that, let's make some big assumptions, right? Let's let's suggest that by going into the middle of the field, mate, uh, you've got to improve your cardiovascular fitness. You're going to go from maybe 10, 15 involvements in a game to 40, 50 maybe or something like that. So you've got to get ready to make more tackles, get ready to be at virtually every play of the ball. That's the physical side of it. Uh, something else on the physical side of it, I would work massively on speed off the mark because if you want to run from dummy half, it's going to be very hard for you to get a run up. From a technical aspect, you have got to get your passing down right. I've worked with a lot of hookers over the years and one of the things I tell them to, I remember, I'm going to use a name here, Luke Vecchio, used to play for uh, Manly Sea Eagles at 16s, 18s and 20s and when I had him as a Matthews kid, he came to me as a wing and I transitioned him to hooker. I actually saw him uh, run from dummy half once in a small sided game and I thought he's a hooker but he could not pass, he could not pass water, right? So I sent him home and this was uh, all credit to him, right? I said, mate, you're going to have to pass 500 times a day and that's just to your left because you've got to do your right as well. You've got to get your passing down pat. If you want to be a hooker, your pass has got to be sweet, off the floor and your pass has to be so consistent. So you go from having the ability to pass from dummy half to then having the ability to be consistent with it so it lands on the same spot all the time there's no shortcut to that it's practice 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 imagine you're passing the ball to the left put your right foot close to the ball go heel to toe on your left foot crouch as far as you can and i always think it's, it's very hard to describe but keep your head straight a bit like a batsman who's, who's playing cricket You've got to keep your head straight so that you can actually see the target and always follow through with your hands so that you see where the ball is going and your ha the ball will go where your hands tell it to. And then I think once you've got those things down pat, so your physical fitness, your speed off the mark and your passing, and that's going to take you a while, you're not going to turn that around in two weeks, it's going to be a... You, you, if you want to switch to hooker, mate, um, you've got a big job ahead of you because you've got to really work on that passing. Well, once you've done that and once you're consistent with your passing, I think then you start to think about the vision. And one tip I always give to my hookers is to walk to the play the ball. And while you walk, you're scanning and you're having a look around. And then once you've done all that, then you start to think about um, disguising in a set of six all the passes that you're doing. So if I look that way, which way am I passing? Yeah, I'm passing that way. If I look that way and passing that way, if I look that way now and I dummy that way and pass that way, that's just a little bit of variety. And I think in a set of six, you can have six different varieties if you want. You can face one way, turn the other, dummy one way, pass the other, all that kind of thing, roll out, etc, etc, etc. I do think there's been an outbreak of kids rolling out at dummy half. And one thing I always encourage them to do is to remember that when they saw Cameron Smith doing that, when they saw other hookers in the game doing that, they're training with people day in, day out, week in, week out, for hours on end. So their combinations are really schmick. I always instruct my hookers, the two Gs, give or go. Once you've done that or the other, and what that means is, if you're going to give the ball, give it straight away. If you're going to go, just go straight away. Once you've got that down pat, your players around you will pick up the rhythm off you. And then when you've spent a few weeks getting your combinations right, then you can start nipping out with the play of the ball. Because the other thing is you need to look at rook recognition and make sure that you're choosing the right rook to go backwards on. So as best as I can, I've run through that for you, mate, thanks to uh, the player who sent that question. What I'll also do in the comments or the... The, 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 the words attached to this post I will put the link to the YouTube video where I, I describe dummy half passing in more depth but basically if you want to be a hooker you've got to be a good passer of the ball from dummy half so 
building your team spirit coaches, um, disarm them, take away the fact that they might have clicks from them, give that as not, don't give it any ammunition, just say we know it can happen, but just make sure we work together and it's okay for you to spend people, spend time, sorry, with people that you like. And if you want to be a hooker, you've got to get that pass down pat. All the very best.